The enemy is this notion of uncontrolled, ungoverned anarchy in enterprises today around data sprawl. So 58% of companies uh, say finding and identifying and security data is one of their biggest challenges. The portion or the allotment of time that data scientists spend in a wasteful way, just prepping and cleaning and organizing data so they can actually do something with it. The average cost in the tens of millions of dollars for a data compliance problem, uh, CCPA, GDPR, et cetera, et cetera. And then at least, and I think this is actually understated, 55% of companies say that they lack a standardized approach across the entirety of the enterprise uh, for data governance. So I think the reason that so many of us are in this space of enterprise data management, governance, data ops, is because we have experienced this very expensive and very challenging problem firsthand. Okay, so what's the solution? It's this notion of data ops, and this concept is not new. I mean, we've heard for years about DevOps or RevOps or other things that are that we have developed in order to address this flavor of issues. And DevOps, for example, is all about agility, iterative nature of developing applications and software, being responsive. But a key thing, and I, I uh, wrote an article on this just a couple of weeks ago, data ops was created and designed with disruption in mind. So that's why I love this diagram so much, this infinite loop of what is the process. So today I'm gonna to talk about the process around data ops. I'm gonna talk about what your data is experiencing because it is this incredibly valuable asset in your enterprise. It's, it's like, it's as, as important as the products or services you make or deliver to your customers and it should be treated as such which means your data has its own supply chain. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today, that entire life cycle or supply chain of this most valuable golden asset called data. And then we're gonna take a look at it from a technology perspective, and then we'll take a look at it from a business perspective. So data ops process, the, the product, meaning your data, the uh, the technology, all of those things come together in what we're calling this data ops uh, initiative. So the process, there is no beginning and there is no end. So if you think about uh, collecting this data, you have to profile, classify it, dedupe it, clean it up, uh, do the mastering, track it soup to nuts. And when I say soup to nuts, I mean from the moment that piece of data was first created on a device, in Salesforce, in uh, uh, streaming uh, through some sort of engine like Kafka, wherever that was created, the lineage all the way from it, the point it was first born to the point that it gets consumed or used in some sort of a AI algorithm or some sort of a dashboard or report or a business process. So custom capturing custom metadata, and that's not just metadata, data about the data, it's operational metadata, it's technical data, uh, uh, metadata, it's data about how it's been used all leading to a collaborative augmented catalog that, now when we go to the other side of this infinite loop, data scientists, analysts, how they consume it, well, they need to be autonomous, they need self-service provisioning, they need to be able to share it, tag it, annotate it, any type of collaboration you can imagine. They want to enrich it, wrangle it, prepare it, and they want to be able to shop for it because some data is going to meet their needs and some isn't. And all of this process is augmented with a number of technologies that make all this possible. So 
data ops, it is an infinite loop. And these are just so some of the components that are uh, that comprise that process. All right, so now let's take it from the perspective of your data. What is a what is a day in the life look like for your data in this world of data ops? Well, files come in. As the files are coming entering into this process, we're capturing all of that metadata that I talked about before, but not just name, rank, serial number that's included in that file. How old is it? How clean is it? Where did it come from? Internal, external, who owns it? Who's touched it, et cetera, et cetera. Then we're profiling and classifying that data. Is it a social security number? Do we need to mask it? Do we need to encrypt it? Then we're determining and integrating with the rest of your security and identity management infrastructure because only certain roles, only certain people can do certain things to that data in terms of access. Then what we're trying to figure out is, is the data clean? Do we need to master it? Do we need to figure out which one is the right version of the truth? We have to determine survivorship, et cetera, et cetera then we need to allow those valuable constituents in your enterprise, customers, data scientists, procurement people to access that data. And more importantly, to see the entire history of it, its lineage for the purposes of making the best possible decision so that they can serve themselves the data that they need to do their job. And then what I call the last mile of your data, they have to be able to do something with it. Can I provision this in a Snowflake instance on AWS? Should I, should I provision a, 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 some sort of an environment within Redshift on AWS? Should I put it in somewhere in a different partition in the data lake so that I can run that, uh, thought spot search against it or a Tableau report or a Python algorithm. And oh, by the way, in that smart augmented catalog, wouldn't it be great if I could also search all of those different consumption varieties, like a piece of Python code that somebody, is our, somebody smart has already written in order to do some sort of a customer uh, 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 clustering algorithm. Uh, I should be able to see that in my catalog as well and take advantage of that as long as I have access to it. So again, a day in the life of your data is not just, oh, it moves from this system to this system. There's a lot more to it than that. All right, now from a technical perspective, what are all the various components of a unified single pane of glass platform to facilitate data ops. And this is what it is. And, and by the way, this is what Arena from Zaloni provides. So those of you who have followed Zaloni know that we did a major product launch, brand new um, platform uh, from Zaloni. We used to call it Zaloni Data Platform and it is reimagined, rebuilt, recreated as Arena by Zaloni. So this unified single platform, single pane of glass into your entire supply chain or life cycle of your data is this. We start with cataloging, inventory, that augmented metadata that I talked before, classifying and profiling, uh, de-identifying uh, your data. Then there's the control layer, which is making sure it's, data, it's quality, taking the action of masking, tokenization, whatever that data requires. Now, in our platform, we have built in some machine learning. So we're smart enough to know, the platform is smart enough to know that that's a social security number and it needs to be handled a certain way. Then providing that end-to-end -end data lineage, all for the purpose of serving the consumer of your data. Because if we did all of this and did not enable somebody to actually make a decision or take an action, it would all be for naught. So we offer up 
this data marketplace. And this is not, uh, maybe it is a little commercial to our co-sponsors today at AWS, but we call this the Amazonification of data. People should be able to go into your internal data marketplace for what is the best possible data for their business use case. Then they should be able to enrich that data, add to it, augment it, prepare it, and collaborate with their peers. Because if I was looking for data within Zaloni, I would want to know if Amy King blessed this data uh, for, for use to look at our customer analytics. And then finally, the last mile, give them self-service. Give them some autonomous uh, methods for serving their own use cases. So moving the data set that they want into a shopping cart and then allowing them to say, can I please provision this data into a Snowflake instance on AWS? Uh, and then as the data steward, this person gets to say, okay, Susan, you can have that data, but you can only have it for 60 days. Uh, so this concept of being given a lease or a time frame or a certain way of using that data just adds to, gives you more and more control, but I would argue it's control without friction. You've allowed that data scientist or that user to provision their own data, tell you what they need it for. You're not stopping them, you're not slowing them down, but you are kind of saving them from themselves if they're about to do something crazy, right? And that's what most data ops professionals want to do. They want to federate, they want to democratize data without getting anybody in a position where they might hurt themselves or hurt the enterprise. And that's exactly our goal. All right, so now let's look at it from a business perspective. So what types of use cases does this data ops, ops mentality, uh, philosophy, this data ops function, what types of value can it add to the enterprise? Well, the first one's a no brainer, right? Just unifying data. Um, one of our customers that was featured in Forbes magazine is Nuveen, uh, the investment product uh, entity within the TIAA family. And that, um, that use case is all about responsible investing or ESG types of products and funds. Imagine how many thousands of external sources that they need to collect, bring in, standardize in order to fulfill the amount of information that they know that stock A is a more responsible company, for example, than stock B. Another typical use case is reducing costs. So most of our customers are in some way trying to move to the cloud, not just for cost uh, reduction, but more so for agility, responsiveness, and speed and efficiency. So another one of our customers is Alexion. We help them move to the cloud in weeks rather than months, or in some cases, years. Um, the, the most common use case that we're finding that is sponsored by digital transformation initiatives is this customer 360, one golden customer record so that you can uh, take your banking to uh, an online banking app. You can have better increased customer loyalty and service if you're in the travel or hospitality industry. You can offer one-to-one -one promotions if you're in the retail or CPG industry. Another item is new revenue. How many times have you heard the term monetizing data? So if, for example, one of our customers is a stock exchange, they want to provide their customers trading information that is across a number of different entities, products, et cetera. And, and they believe that they can make more money off the data around uh, trades than the trades themselves. Um, 
Another area is just streamlining and making access to analytics faster, better, and in a more self-service autonomous way. We've talked about that. Standardizing governance and rules around how you clean up data, what you mask, what you obfuscate, de-identify, encrypt, et cetera, et cetera. Building those standard rules in place so that you're consistent across the entire life cycle of your data. And then I talked about a data marketplace. We have a number of customers now who are opening up their internal data marketplaces to their external constituents. And then finally, this notion of enabling augmented intelligence, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. So many of our consumers of data, data scientists, they really are becoming, I don't know, this world between IT and end user is, is merging, it's converging. So, so many of these data scientists are very technical in their nature and they can work with their own data and they should be allowed to work with their own data. So a lot of folks are giving access to these um, advanced consumers of information directly into their enterprise data stores, data lakes, warehouses, et cetera, because they, it just increases their ability to do their jobs. So there you have it. Our perspective on data ops from a process perspective, a day in the life of your data, what it looks like, a technological perspective and a business perspective. So with that, let me just thank you all again for attending today. I hope you have a great day. And Amy, I turn it back over to you. Thank you, Susan. And thank you for showing us how modern data ops is really transforming enterprises. The agility, speed, and efficiency benefits you uh, showed us, and really how those enable uh, those promised revenue-driving uh, use cases.